Welcome back everyone. I hope your December and your Christmas season is going well. We are in the middle of December, so Christmas parties are in full swing. I am sure many of you have a Christmas party to attend to this weekend. Then next weekend is always a big weekend for Christmas parties, and then of course we will have Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I have shared many videos on the topic of keeping it classy during the holidays and how to project yourself at all of your holiday gatherings. Today's video is really taking all of the information that I have shared with you recently as well as in past videos where I talk about keeping it classy, how to project yourself with grace, class, and elegance, how to handle yourself. But today's video is really condensing how to be a proper guest when you are at a party. So this is the classy lady's guide to being a proper or good party guest. I'm also going to share tips on if you are hosting a party. Now again, everything that I share is going to be a repeat of something that I have shared in the past, but I really feel it's important to really drive home a lot of these skills. So although you can get to all of these things in past videos, and I will have all of them linked, today's version is really just going to be a reminder because we are in full-blown party season. So the classy ladies guide to being a party guest or a host, let's start with number one. And that is RSVP. I have a whole entire video on how to read and respond to an invitation. So you will definitely want to check that out. It will be linked. It will also be up here. So that's going to be your extended version. What I have to say about RSVP is that it is very important that if the invitation that you receive requests a reply back, an RSVP, that you do it by the date specified. We have became so lazy about this. I don't really know what the culprit is, but I believe we became the society of, well, if I feel like going, I'll go or if nothing better comes along. Well, one of the big things I want to talk about in today's video are the two R words, and it's responsibility and respect. If you are a responsible person and you are a respectful person, you won't have too many trip ups or faux pas in your life. So it's really important to be that person. And when it comes to RSVP, that is exactly what you do. You look at the date, you make sure your RSVP is turned in in plenty enough time, and if you do respond and reply that you are going to be there, then you are to be there. That's, it should be a non-negotiable unless something catastrophic happens. Now, a tip if you are hosting a party, and let me just share, I have a whole video talking about how to host a party. I also have a printable download with tips, and then I also have a party planning checklist. I really recommend that if you entertain, if you are going to be entertaining, even tonight, it's worth multitasking and watching that video because there is so much that I share there, and I, it's, it's down to little things. Little things like parking, shoes being worn in the home, garbage bags, you'd be amazed what I share in that video. But if you are hosting a party and you send out an invite, I recommend that you put a deadline date of when you would like that RSVP to be returned. Include your contact, and sometimes people don't like to call. We have became such a texting society. I know when I send out an invitation, I do put the date on there when I would like the RSVP returned by, and then I also put on there, you can call or text me, and I even put my email on there as well, just to make sure that I am providing everything so no one has an excuse to not return their RSVP. Number two, the plus one, and uh, this is tricky, this is tricky, and th there's a lot I have to say to the host on this one, but, and again, I talk about this in other videos, but do not assume that you have a plus one. 
The envelope that you receive when you are invited to something is pivotal. If it only has your name on there, then you are the only one invited. Now, if you were to open up the invitation and something is worded differently in there where it says, feel free to be, bring your, your friend, your boyfriend, that's different. But if your name is the only one on the envelope, that is an indicator that you do not have a plus one. So never assume that you do. You also have to be careful if you have children. If the kids are invited, the envelope or inside on the invitation, it will indicate that. If you don't see plus family or kids included anywhere, believe me, they're not included. It would be indicated on there. If you are hosting a party, be very clear because some people really like to, to push the envelope on this one and they make these assumptions or they feel that because they would invite kids that other people should invite kids as well. Well, that is not how classy people operate. So again, responsibility and respect. And if you are assuming your children are invited, that's not responsible and that's not being respectful. If there's something that is in question and you are not sure if you're reading it correctly, which again, we the host should be doing a good job at that, but never ask if you can bring the children if they are not invited. Do not contact the host and say, do you mind if we bring the kids? That puts them on the spot in a classy, elegant individual would never even think of doing that. So if you've been guilty of doing that, it's okay. Now you know that it is just unacceptable and that it does not come off with class and grace. So a lot of it is how do you want to be portrayed? What, what do you want to put out there? And if you're doing that, it's not a positive that people are feeling from you. But again, if you're hosting, make it very clear. I highly recommend that if this is an adults only party, I would make sure that I have that on the invitation. So let's say my husband and I receive an invitation and it says Mr. and Mrs. Paul Hensel. I still feel that although I would know that means not family, but when I open the invitation, I think it's always nice if it does indicate that because there, no one should be in question and they shouldn't be anyway. But again, there are those people that just do. They just do. It's just people are wired all differently. And, and some people will try to push that envelope. But again, very important for good communication there. Going back to the plus one, if you're somewhat in question there, uh, Again, I don't really feel it's classy to reach out unless something comes off confusing. For example, if my husband and I received a party invitation and the envelope said to Paul and Tracy Hensel and girls, well, I only have two girls living at home, so that would tell me that both Carly and Chloe, well, Carly's technically not living at home, but because she's just away at college, you could kind of go both ways. I would feel she was she is invited. But let's say Carly had a boyfriend. I don't sit back and assume if Carly goes, she can take her boyfriend. If it doesn't say Carly plus one and Chloe, then the boyfriend is not invited. And again, if you're in question of something, then I guess ask, but be very careful how you do that because it's really putting people on the spot. And most of the time, Unless it's just a casual house party, a lot of parties, they're paying per plate, even if they're doing an hors d'oeuvre or doing a cocktail party with appetizers, hors d'oeuvres, and drinks, they're still somewhat paying per person. So just be mindful. Number three, don't show up empty handed. If you are going to a party, always bring something. And what I would recommend is when you receive the invitation and you reach out to the host, letting them know if you are going to come, offer to bring an hors d'oeuvre or a dessert at that time. Say, what would you like me to bring? I would love to pitch in. And if they decline the offer, then I would still bring something, a bottle of wine, a bottle of champagne, box of chocolates, 
something like that, a candle. What you want to do though is make sure that whatever you are bringing, they can easily set to the side because you never want the host of a party to have to do something with what you brought. The other thing, I would be a little bit cautious to show up with a dish to pass unless you have gotten the okay from the host because most of the time, the people throwing the party have the designated place that they are going to put all of the food and they're not planning for additional things. So this could kind of create a little chaos and you never want the host to have to go get more spots or tables to put more food on. So my rule of thumb is I always offer to bring a dish to pass and if they tell me we're all set but thank you anyway, I'm still going to bring a hostess gift and it's going to be something in a nice gift bag or wrapped box or a beautiful box of chocolate that they can set to the side. If you are the host, have a designated place off to the side where you can set gifts because most of your guests are going to show up with something. Number four is dress code. I talk all the time about dressing with grace and class and elegance. So you can just reference a lot of my past videos. I will have them linked to help you with that. But if there is a dress code, out of respect, that is how you dress. If it says cocktail party, you dress for a cocktail party. If it says holiday festive, which is something that I put in some of my invitations when I've hosted Christmas parties, that means really anything goes, just have fun. Have fun, jazz it up, just be festive. Um, be in the season, you know, that I guess holiday festive to me wouldn't necessarily be blue jeans unless it's a really dressed up outfit, but just jazz it up a little bit, dress up a little bit. If it's a themed party, then there's a couple different things. And this is where I want to talk to the host. I'm not big on themed parties. I mean, I'm not against them but I'm not someone who generally dresses up for Halloween. So if I were invited to a Halloween party and it said, please come in costume, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably going to drag my feet a little bit just because it's not an area that I want to spend my money. And it's really not, it's, it's just not something that I really enjoy. I love to see the kids get dressed up, but I am not that adult that gets into dressing up. Where I am going with this is for the host. I think it's nice if you're going to do a themed party to give them the option. Uh, feel free to come in costume or feel free not to so that you're not excluding anyone or, or none of your guests feel like, I just don't really feel like getting dressed up for Halloween. Um, the other thing, the, the ugly Christmas sweater. Uh, that's a big thing during the holidays. I think it's nice if you're the host to say ugly Christmas sweater optional. Some people don't have an ugly Christmas sweater and have no desire to have one. So I like when it's optional. We actually, the last couple years, I, it may be the last couple or maybe it was just last year, at my in-laws on Christmas Eve, they started doing an optional ugly Christmas sweater party for, for Christmas Eve. And most people come in their ugly Christmas sweater and some people don't, it's optional. And I like when that happens, it just gives people a little bit more freedom. But again, pay attention to the dress code. If you are in question as to what something means because you can't decipher, Ask the host, when you do your RSVP, ask if they could share a little bit more what they mean by the dress code or how is everyone going to be dressing? Give me some guidelines. I am a very detail oriented person. So whenever I send an invitation for anything, I am very clear and specific because I like details. And not everyone is detail oriented, but the ones that are, they really appreciate it because then they don't have to reach out with some of those uncomfortable questions like, how should I dress? I, I pretty much state in there what my expectation is and I always give them a lot of freedom to kind of choose how they are, what they prefer to dress in. Even if someone is more of a casual person, their dress up version may be more casual than someone else's. I like to give that little bit of elbow room. Number five, time management. Let's just face it, 
Some people don't know how to prioritize and they don't know how to manage their time and we will never be able to do anything about it. But I do want to talk about it when it comes to being a good and classy party guest. If you are invited to a party, it is your responsibility to be there when the party starts unless it is indicated that you do not need to be. It's also your responsibility to leave by the time the party ends if there is an end time. This goes back to also giving some tips and advice if you are hosting. Let's say dinner is going to be at 3 o'clock. From my experience, because I've been hosting parties for many years, I feel very fluent in hosting a party. I feel like I do a good job. I've made mistakes. I've learned from them. And I feel I don't stress because I've gotten so experienced of hosting a party. But one thing I have observed and witnessed is that people like to mingle. They like to arrive. They like to take their coat off, they like to grab a drink, and they like to catch up with people that they have not gotten to see in a long time. They aren't ready to just sit down and eat. I generally schedule the meal, if we are having a meal, for one to one and a half hours after the arrival time. And even an hour is kind of pushing it for some people. So one of the reasons I like to do this is then there's no hardcore rule as to when someone arrives. So let's say if I put an invitation out, generally I will have hors d'oeuvres and cocktails starting at six, dinner promptly at seven. Now it's your responsibility if you are responsible and respectful to be there and ready to eat at seven, not walking in the door. That would be very disrespectful because we're trying to accommodate everyone and feed everyone but it gives you some window there. So you don't have to be there right at six because it's just cocktail hour. And people love that time to mingle and talk. I always have a nice presentation of appetizers out and drinks, but that's how I like to do it. I, I never host a party and say dinner's at two. If it's going to be dinner at two, we're gonna start that party about one o'clock because it gives some elbow room. Not everyone does that. If you are invited to a party and dinner is at three, you need to be there at three. I would hope that they give some elbow room. In most cases, I would say that they do. But again, you have to look at what am I responsible for on my end. Now, we can't always arrive to a party on time. Let's say you work and the party starts at five and you don't get off until six. That's not a big deal. It's what you do with it. That's what elevates one person over someone who doesn't respond properly. So this is when you want to get back in touch with the host, give your RSVP, and share with them that unfortunately you don't get off work until 6, so you won't be arriving until closer to 7. And you tell them, please don't wait for me. Don't pass this information off to someone else to tell the host. This is your responsibility to do it yourself. Contact the host, communicate to them what's going on so that they know. Now, if a party is an open house and it says open house three to six, an open house is different than a party. An open house means that you can come and go anytime you would like between three and six. The important thing is you don't show up prior to three and you don't arrive or stay later than six. It's an open house, people come and go as they choose. Number six, greet the host. This is very important. Now, in most cases, when you arrive at a party, the host will be the one getting the door and letting you in. So that is when you are greeting the host. They will take your coat, they will take the gift that you brought or whatever dish to pass, and this is the greeting. You want to keep it very short because they are greeting other people, especially if it is a party that does start at a designated time and there's not a lot of elbow room. Understand that many people are arriving. It's important that you greet, but keep it very short. Now, let's just say that the door is unlocked and you can see people in there 
and you let yourself in, it's very important that upon arriving, you find the host and greet them. Um, always pay them a compliment. You could tell them the decor looks beautiful, your home is so warm and inviting, or the food smells amazing, or wow, look at you, you look phenomenal. Whatever it is, be happy and be thankful that they invited you and always offer some type of compliment, but it's very important to greet the host upon arriving. Now there's a second part to this, and that is you also go see the host before you leave. You always say goodbye to the host, thank them for inviting you, and again, you keep it very short because they have a lot to do. They are tending to people, they are tending to food, they are filling ice buckets, getting drinks, they are doing a lot of things, but it is very important to go up and say, we're taking off. Thank you so much for inviting us. Have a Merry Christmas. Enjoy your time with your family, whatever it may be, and let them know that you'll let yourself out. That's a really nice token to add in just because they're so busy, but it is very important to say your goodbye and to thank the host. A lot of people miss that one. Number seven, such a hard one. It really is for everyone. I'm just as guilty as everyone else. So I'm not here to try to pretend like I always have it together. I, I'm, I'm very aware and very conscious. I've made my share of mistakes and I'm one to always learn from them. But some of these are more tough than others. And this one is big. Silence and stay off your phone. Really, a classy lady and a, and a, a gentleman, they're going to stay off their phone. They're going to silence it. It's going to be put away. It just shows respect. Again, it's responsibility and respectful. That's the two key components. And I know it's very hard, but there's a couple things. No one is saying you can't periodically check your phone. If your kids are left with the babysitter, you are definitely going to want to check your phone periodically to see if the babysitter has reached out to you with a concern. I get that. The important thing is not to have your phone visible. It just does not need to be out with all the beautiful food and drinks. It just doesn't need to be in front of you. And what happens is, and this is really the biggest thing that I think is just unfortunate is you will see people scrolling social media at a party, at a get together, at a gathering. And that's where it's just gone too far. It really has. It, we can scroll social media anytime. If it was a virtual party, it would say on the invitation, welcome to the virtual party, but it's not. Set the phone to the side. Don't have it out where everyone can see it. If you need to check it occasionally, go for it. But if you are going to have it by you, because you know everyone else will, which is not to me the green light that you get to, but many people operate that way. Well, if they're doing it, I get to do it. Well, how is that serving you in some areas of your life? Just curious, okay. We'll keep moving. <laughs> but yeah, just be mindful, be mindful. Don't be scrolling social media. Also, do not take a call. Uh, there's nothing that is more disrespectful than when someone is in a room full of people at a party, their phone goes off and they're talking on it really loud. It's just disrespectful. I would think people would know, but not everyone does. So again, do the best you can, stay off your phone. The other thing is, yes, there are situations that are a little bit more loose. We have those people that we can have our phone out with. I get that. Pay attention though, not everyone is like that. Number eight, and I have so many videos talking about this, and you really need to watch my keeping it classy during the holidays video because I do expand on this, but no disagreements and no drama at a party. Just don't. If you and your spouse or significant other get into a disagreement en route to a party, you leave it in the car. No one should have a clue that there is any animosity going on between you and your significant other when you arrive. Also, if you are at a party where you really just don't get along with a particular person 
or maybe there's more people you don't get along with. I don't know. Whatever it is, this isn't the time. If you know they rub you the wrong way, look at what that opportunity is for you. No one is saying you have to engage in conversation with them. So the best thing to do is just steer clear from those people. There's always plenty of people to engage in conversation. This also is not a time to have a talk with someone. Uh, you don't go up to, let's say your sister-in-law or one of your friends and say, hey, do you have a couple minutes I'd like to talk to you? Maybe you want to resolve an issue, but this isn't the time nor the place to resolve that. Number nine, and this is a repeat as well as all of these are, check your tone, make sure you are not talking too loud, make sure you are not laughing too loud. Anything in excess is just that, it's too much. We can talk about excess in every way. If you are eating excessively, people will see it. If you are dressed showing body parts excessively, people are going to frown upon that. If you have so much jewelry on in excess, it's too much. If you're drinking too much in excess, always remember anything in excess is just too much. Be mindful, be respectful, be responsible. And number 10 goes back to the drinking. Be mindful of your drinking. Do not drink in excess. Um, often that's when we're going to get a little too loud or maybe not behave in a way that we are going to be very proud of the next day if we are lucky enough to remember it. Pace yourself if it's a long party. And I don't need to go any further into that because again, I talk about all of these in other videos. I will have so many videos linked below I think this one is really important prior to going to a party. Keeping it classy during the holidays, you'll hear some repeats, but I expand in that video. Also the dining etiquette video, very important to watch that if you are going to be dining out, just to be reminded of some of those proper table manners and proper etiquette skills. So there you have it, the classy ladies guide to being a great party guest and also some tips for the host. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and enjoy. Enjoy your parties and all of your festivities. Don't forget if you have shopping to do, check out all of the Christmas gift guides. They will all be linked. All right, enjoy your party tonight and the rest of the season. We'll see you soon.